Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to tonight's show, the first report in full effect, bro. We got a lot to talk about tonight, and shout out to everybody in the chat box and everybody watching this live or on the replay, guys. Make sure you guys pound that like button as you do, and we do appreciate you. We got a lot to cover today. Cowboys are finally coming off the bye week. There were no trades made during the bye week. That doesn't necessarily mean that one won't be done because the trade deadline is uh, in November. Okay, so still got a couple more days to go there. So bye week doesn't necessarily mean like you have to hammer something down or anything like that. But the Cowboys got a lot going on. We got a lot of good nuggets coming down to talk about here. Mike, how are you doing, bro? Good. She, she, my cryptocurrency portfolio is going to the moon. I'm doing great, Joe. Awesome, awesome. So we we got a you know a lot to talk about. We'll, we'll preview the Minnesota Vikings game. We'll touch up on that. Uh, let, let's hit up some of the uh, the injury reports coming down here. First of all, Mike, we we finally have some news here of some players returning to practice, in particular. Uh, Michael Gallup uh, coming back into action. Cedric Wilson, Donovan Wilson, Randy Gregory, full participants as well. But uh, let's hit upon that. You know, Michael Gallup, what's what's your feeling on what he does for the Cowboys when he gets back into action? Joe, this is what Michael Gallup does for the Dallas Cowboys. He fixes your red zone offense, okay? It's a whole – yes, you got your tight ends there. But guess what, Joe? Teams know how to take out our tight ends, right? Michael Gallup, you get Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper. You get Dalton Schultz in there. Red zone, improved. That's what Michael Gallup brings to you. Yes, yes. Unless your name is Dalton Schultz, then you're unstoppable. You become the number one tight end in the league in the NFL. No, I'm playing. I do love my boy Dalton Schultz, but you make a great point there, Mike. That that should open things up even more for these guys. You know, Dalton and uh, Jarwin, like you said, you know. Um, and what I like about Michael Gallup is his ability to find openings anywhere. He, he is notorious for getting the toe drags. You know, uh, him, him and Dak Prescott, they're really good working together. You know, they can move the chains. He's, he's another one of these chain movers, so. You know, if, if you can get him back up to speed here, I think you'll work him in, you know, into the lineup. But uh, it's going to be good to see him, you know, in action here. And that, that's kind of what we're hoping that we're going to see him come into action here, uh, possibly looking for this game here with Minnesota, Mike. So what could the impact be right out the gate? You know, what could it be? Are you predicting – a lot of snaps right out the gate or, uh, you know, transitioning into it, packages. What, how are you feeling they're going to bring him along here, Mike? You look, at, you look at what Mike McCarthy normally does, and that's ease players into things, right? So I expect Michael Gallup to get maybe 10 plays in. Um, especially, is, I believe he's going to get a lot of playing time uh, in the red zone, Joe. Um, I, I think Kellen Moore has some packages Remember, Michael Gallup only played one game this year, so we haven't even seen the full design that Kellen Moore wanted to do because we had to go to Cedric Wilson. We had to go to guys like Noah Brown, Malik Turner, right? So we haven't seen this offense in a full package since week one. And we were that. We threw a lot of balls um, in week one, and we kept it close with those with those uh, Buccaneers. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how Kellen Moore gets this offense going with Michael Gallup back in the lineup. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, the, the big question will be, will Dak Prescott be in this game? He was limited uh, so far this week. He's been limited participant, uh, but they are working him along. So it, it'll be interesting to see if, in fact, he plays. I think right now he's, his status will be questionable, if, if we're being quite honest. But knowing Dak, he's probably going to want to tough it out and, and play anyway. Uh, Marvel and Group, shout out to you in the chat box. Appreciate you. I love this comment here. Return of deep ball plays with Michael Gallup returning. That, that's true. You know, um, more deep balls for sure. Gallup really is one of those guys that really excels at that, right? So great point there. And the rapport with him and Dak, you know, get that deep ball, you know, get you a, a PI call, you know, and uh, move the chains, you know what I mean? And and, and, and we're, real quick, man, big shout out to Cedric Wilson. I mean, he, he caught a crucial fourth down catch against these uh, – 
Patriots. And if you don't catch that, the game's over. Uh, so yeah. don't write off Cedric Wilson. Guy's a playmaker. He showed that against those Patriots. So if they can figure out a way to get four wide receivers on that field, it's deadly. I promise you it's deadly. Yeah, I like this comment by Dwayne Wright. Ten plays could be great. That could be at least three touchdowns out of ten plays. <laughs> I like your thinking there, Dwayne. I think Dak will be fine. How about them Cowboys? Yeah, I like your thinking all the way, man. I think ten plays bring him along. I think that that's a good, good number. You know what I mean? And uh, you you'll have to rest up some of these guys anyway. You know, it's like like Mike said, Cedric Wilson will get his time, and I think that uh, maybe you see Gallup in that that sort of role coming back. You know. If he in fact does start this game here, and and we're going to see how Amari Cooper is after the bye week because he was banged up, right? He had an ankle, he had a, uh, a hamstring, uh, ribs. So maybe Michael uh, Amari Cooper and if Amari Cooper isn't healed up properly, Michael Gallup is a, is an element for Amari Cooper to get uh, to be on the field, but not take as much ground and pound so his body can heal up as we get past this bye week. Well, that's a great point too. There, Amari Cooper stays banged up. To his credit, he he plays through it. You know, he's uh, I know that was one of the questions when he was with the Raiders. You know, as far as, as that type of deal. But but here with the Cowboys, um, he's played through a lot of injury here. You know, and uh, as he's whether he's a decoy or whatever, all these receivers are getting their their bite of the feast. You know, one week it, it'll be Coop. You know, the last one here it was a, it was the CD Lamb show. You know, maybe the next week it's Cedric. I mean, it's it's just a great evolving, you know, revolving door of um, offense from these wide receivers. You know, I I love it, man. So, a little bit of update there. Another update, guys. Tristan Hill coming off of pup. So this guy, you know, is, he's been uh, shrouded in mystery as far as like where he's at. What what is the deal here? You know, you don't hear much about him, but you are hearing some stuff here that. Uh, you know, McCarthy said in his press conference that he's an explosive player. And, you know, you you, you look at some of the plays that he had last year, right. and, and he looked pretty good. All right. So talk a little bit about that there, Mike, about uh, about Tristan Hill and what's your expectations. I'll be right back. I'll let Mike take over here on that. Hey, <laughs> Cowboys blow. I got the show today. I'm just kidding. He'll be right back, guys. But no, talking on the subject of Tristan Hill. Uh, you, I mean, you look at last year um, when when he got hurt. He had 11 tackles um, and five assists in how many games did he play? I don't think he played that many games. In yeah, five games, right? And he was the only one with that five in that Mike Nolan defense, right? So Tristan Hill coming in, I mean, they added, uh, they added Bohanna. They added, they added uh, Gallimore, right? They they added, uh, oh crap, who's the other one? Uh, Osa Odigizua. Um, so they got pieces in. Tristan Hill, he's not going to get many snaps, but when he is there, he has to showcase those talents because I don't think he gets a second contract with the Cowboys. They're not going to use a franchise tag on him. So he has to put some resume uh, for other NFL teams, he has to put that together, and he knows that. And it, it's just crazy how quiet his name has been this whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marvin Group going off tonight. I, I love his comments tonight, man. He's on fire. Marvin Group, Tristan Hill, make a play, do something, you weirdo. Yeah, so he's kind of had that that reputation for being, you know, kind of a, of a different type of dude, right? So, um it's 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 an interesting deal here, but you know that that first that first step, you know, there is something to that. He's got a really good first step off the line. He did look improved from the previous year. His rookie year was almost like a, a like a red shirt, really. I mean, you didn't really see anything of him. So, you know, it's just another body to get in into the mix. You know what I mean? So it doesn't hurt by any means. It's not like he's going to be the starter, but if you can get some pop fresh legs here and there to to penetrate and uh, put some pressure on the quarterback from from the middle here which is something that we we that we we want you can't just be osa you know what i mean it's got to be somebody else needs to to bring the pressure from the middle i'm not saying it'll be tristan hill but he has the capability of doing that if he's fully bought in mike and i think that's kind of the deal here with tristan as far as like you know going on back to college you know working with, with different staffs 
is he going to be bought into this Dan Quinn system, Mike? What's your gut feeling here on that? He has to be bought in. Dan Quinn's going to ship him out of here if he ain't. Dan Quinn don't play around. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you, you look at what Jalen Smith did, you know, the odd man out there, shipped him right out of here. Went to Green Bay, and he's one of their best, worst linebackers. So great job, Green Bay, for picking Jalen Smith. His body in football just it, – it, 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 it's so sad. Guy had so much talent, but um, no, if he don't play good, Joe, Tristan Hill's out of here. Yeah, yeah, I think it might might be a short leash for him because, you know, along with some of these guys that are coming back, you're going to have to make some moves to, uh, you know, either deactivate somebody or outright cut somebody. So, we've already seen the Cowboys make a couple of moves just to get Lyle back onto the roster. You know. Um, there's going to be some more moves here. Uh, they're going to be coming up. So you're you're going to be on a, a short leash if, if you're one of these guys, right? So <clears throat> will he be one of these guys that's deactivated every week? But we, if you see that, I think that uh, the writing will be on the wall there. So if he's a healthy scratch, right point. Then, then you know that the, something is, is not very good there. I can see it, too. Zeppelin fan in the house. Appreciate you, bro. What's your opinion on LVE in the near future? Mike, you want to take that one there? They're going to be on a different team. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I and I have a feeling it's going to be an NFC team, an NFC East team. Um, I, 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 think the, uh, I think the Eagles can snatch him up. I think I think he'll go somewhere where he he's going to be close to the hunting area. I'm thinking Chicago, you know, be like that Brian Urlacher type of guy. He he seems like he would be like a Chicago type of linebacker, you know. But we'll hey, see. Stack, Ron Quad Smith, Khalil Mack. Well, Khalil's more of an outside pass rush and linebacker. You know what I mean? So I mean, I, I, he could go anywhere. Maybe he'll go to to the Packers. I I, I just I just think he's going to go somewhere up there in the cold. Close to the the hunting, he loved. I mean, during the bye week, he posted, you know, pictures of his hunting expedition. So definitely, he's a big fan of that area. So that's I, I think that too. I don't think he'll be here next year. You you drafted a linebacker with Jabril Cox. They're, you know, sprinkling him in here and there, and I don't think they're done yet. I think that I think they will add another linebacker, you know, in in this other draft. It's it's uh, there there's some good names for linebackers that you could be had. You know, even at that back end of the first round where hopefully, you know, we're going to be at hopefully number 32. But, you know, there will be some that will be there for us if, if you want to go that route. Uh, second and third round as well. So I think that they're, they're not done there yet by any means. I think you got to add more play. It can't just be Micah and it can't just be um, Jabril. Right, Mike, you got to keep fresh legs coming. Yeah, you definitely got to keep fresh legs coming. and. It's going to be real interesting because, like Joe said, I don't think the Cowboys are done dipping at the linebacker position because I think next year, because they know what they got in Micah Parsons and there's going to be a year of film on him playing coverage and linebacking, it, they're not going to like that. They're going to like him on the edge. So if I really think Micah Par- – if they don't sign Randy Gregory, which they'll be crazy not to, but if they don't sign Randy Gregory, then I can see Micah Parsons taking over his spot. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's – That'll be interesting indeed. It's going to be fun draft season. I can't wait to get to it in, in full effect. Mike, after um, <laughs> yeah, after after we get the Super Bowl going, let's talk about this. All right. I want to talk about the offensive line. It's one of the big news nuggets of the day as far as like Mike McCarthy commenting on Lyle Collins and this sorts of thing. So I, I want to take a look at uh, this tweet here from Michael Gelkin because I think it's a little telling of uh you know something possibly things to come so <clears throat> take a look here let's go ahead and share this to the screen guys okay we're taking a look at this tweet here from michael gelkin cowboys offensive line lyle collins let me add it to the screen that would help <laughs> all right <clears throat> there we go guys Cowboys offensive line Leo Collins saw ample work at both guard and right tackle during individual drills to begin practice. More time on the left side when at guard. Okay. This is Collins' first practice in serving a five-week suspension. So 
interesting indeed. You can see, you know, here's a picture here with, uh, you know, Lyle. I mean, yeah, Lyle over here on the right side and um, getting some snaps there, right? So you see him there, good good picture there from Gelkin coming through the clutch as usual. McGovern, Collins here as well. Another note uh, in this picture is that you're seeing McGovern here, right? So, and we're going to talk about this uh, in detail here, but you're looking at, you know, they're looking at something here. They're, they're looking at some snaps for McGovern. Lyle Collins, like I said, at the guard position, Mike, what, what is your feeling here as far as like Lyle Collins, where does he fit on this line right now? When you have, and you, you, you talked about McGovern there. You talked about Lyle Collins there, right? So this tells you that the Dallas Cowboys went and watched film and I didn't find <clears throat> weak links. Okay. Looks like we're we're getting some choppy connection from, from Mike here. I think he's he's stuck again. Um so guys, the the issue is that Mike McCarthy comes out and says that he will be working at guard and tackle and saying that um, you know. Um, steel is is your starting right tackle pretty much he's starting out at the week and it, it does leave the door open to lyle collins is this going to happen where he does go back to left guard mike are you back yeah can you hear me yeah yeah my bad my, my, my shiba inu's taking over the internet but uh <laughs> can you everybody's cool everybody hear me we gotta throw Mike some money to get that 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 internet working, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but you're you're you're, you're breaking up every now and then. So, all right, guys. So let's let's talk about this right here. Let's, let's talk about this, uh, we're gonna talk about this. Is this a potential best starting five? All right. Is this what could be the future of the Cowboys' offensive line? All right. Left tackle, Tyron Smith. Left guard. Now, if you're asking me who is the better guard, it's it's been Lyle Collins this whole time, right? But, you know, they paid him to be a right tackle. Now, if you're Lyle Collins and they ask you to move to left guard, you're you're doing that move because you're, you're getting, uh, you know, tackles, they get more money than guards usually. So, you know, you're getting paid tackle money to play guard. I'm taking that money all the way. So there's not much pushback. You know, they asked about that. And, you know, no pushback there from uh, Lyle Collins. So, no. Lyle Collins at left guard center, right? We're talking about uh, Connor McGovern, right? Getting more snaps. I think that uh, this is something that they're going to take a look at. You know, I think that they're going to take a look at this because you want to give Biatish the, the time to, to grow into the position here. But, uh, you know, if you're talking the best starting five and, you know, McGovern has that flex, is it, are we getting closer to this lineup here? All right. Zach Martin at right guard, we know that. Terrence Steele, he has earned that spot. And I, I kind of predicted this, you know, that uh, – I wouldn't be surprised either way. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was going to stay a steal, and I wouldn't be surprised if it would have been uh, Lyle. But, you know, this this team um, is playing no favors. No more favors. You know, I think under Jason Garrett's regime, there was a lot of favoritism and a lot of, you know, uh, not giving shots to a lot of guys. So some of the younger guys, you know, some of these guys took a long time to, to get – you know, into starting positions because, uh, you know, you can call it favoritism or whatever the hell you want to call it. Mike, be there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. So what is your take here on this best starting five scenario? Is this something that we're going to see soon or is this – or is it not? What's your take on this here? I, I think you're going to see it soon. I think the Cowboys just coming off a of bye week. Mike McCarthy's big on, on – uh, on chop up film and looking at 
uh, ways to improve football team. This is the difference between uh, a Super Bowl winning coach and a middle of the road kind of coach in Jason Garrett, right? So the Dallas Cowboys, that they're serious, right? They're they're identifying issues, and we know Tyler was and Tyler was an issue. We know how good of a player Terrence Steele has been playing. We know when Connor McGovern had to go in there, he played really well. So we know this. They know this. We know that Lyle Collins can play right tackle and left guard. They understand it. How do you – How do, your quarterback's coming off a calf injury. How do you protect your $75 million quarterback? You put Lyle at left guard. You put McGovern at center. And you – and you put Terrence Steele at right tackle. That's your best spot. They identified that in the bye week, and I think you'll see it see it sooner than later. No, that's that's definitely a great point there, Mike. That uh, you know that they they like that flex, and they're going to use it. You know what I mean? I, and I think this is this is going to be something to really keep an eye on. You know, I don't know if uh, Lyle is is a hundred percent, you know, uh, ready to go a full game. So. I don't know if this will happen this week, but I think they're thinking about it, right? Exactly what you're talking about, Mike. And we talk about, you know, the misnomer that, that Lyle Collins is a Pro Bowl player. He's never made the Pro Bowl. I don't know who has put that out there, but we have, you know, he's, he he's, he hasn't. He's, he's not a Pro Bowl right tackle. I mean, he, he hasn't been, you know, a first teamer or whatever. So, but at guard, Mike, that's a different story. I think he's a mauler. He's somebody that, that likes to get dirty with you and fight they're in the trenches and, and we saw that his rookie year you know when he was coming in and out the lineup between him and ron leary so i to me this is a no-brainer you know like like and, and and the other thing about this too mike is yes while you could you know move on from Lyle collins after this year we got to remember connor williams is in a contract year i just don't see them re-upping him so let him go. <laughs> let let Connor Williams go do penalties and get run over somewhere else. Let Lyle Collins be the pro bowl left guard. He he will be a pro bowler at the left guard position, in my opinion. My what what do you think about that scenario with Connor Williams and Lyle? Well, with Connor Williams and Lyle, yeah, I, I I think someone put it in the chat that that Connor Williams is the most penalized player on the offensive line and Mike McCarthy he hates turnovers on offense and he hates penalties so those, those two drive him crazy and just in the two years a year and a half that he's been our head coach you vividly see it so they they see it on film they see the penalties they have to correct it and um I, I think the thinking's done and I, I and if they're getting him reps there, um, it, it it wouldn't surprise me if it's a game time pull or if they just go ahead and just start him. Yeah, no, it's definitely it's definitely an exciting thing to talk about because I think if um, if you don't if you don't move, I think if you don't use Lyle Collins and you keep him as a backup then the, the conversation then becomes, is he tradable? Is this a player that, that you go ahead and, 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 you know, take trade offers for? You know what I mean? So, but for me, I, I don't think I would. I think I would keep you still under contract for another two seasons, right? Let him be that Pro Bowl left guard. What's your thoughts on, on that there, Mike? Yeah, you know, because, because Terrence Dill is good, we, we're having this conversation. If it wasn't for Terrence Steele, we wouldn't be talking about this. We're going to be thanking yeah. the football gods that Lyle Collins is back. So let's not let's not be too like Joseph. Let's not be too quick to just throw players to different teams because uh, Mike McCarthy says it bad all the time. It takes seventy-seven men to win a championship, and if you're just throwing uh, great players out the door, um, you you lose your chances of. Uh, getting the championship here back in Dallas, so um, but let's let, let's just slow it down. It's a great problem. It's a great problem. Let, let, let's just uh, keep having this problem. Yeah, it it, it it is a very good problem. Um, 
Ryan Doyle, this is a great run blocking offensive line. Herschel Walker at his age now can run behind this line and be successful. I agree, Ryan. Like, that's serious talk right there. Like, that's real talk, right? Because um, they're playing they're playing high level right now. And I think that's another reason why you go with the hot hand at right tackle. I don't think that you – I guarantee you if you were to put Lyle in there over steel and the minute he starts, you know, getting beat or a penalty, people will be like, ah – we should have left Steele in there or, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's kind of wild here, but it, it is it is a very good run-blocking offensive line. But, uh, you know, I think if you look at this lineup, it would be like a behemoth, right? Like, you, this is like – this could potentially be with, with that 90s offensive lineman. And I think it's because, you know, you're getting your best five offensive linemen. To me, this is your best starting five. And like you said, Mike, it's because of, of Terrence Steele. The undrafted free agent out of Texas Tech really turned it up here in year two. And uh, now we can we have the opportunity now to really put it on people. We can really drop the hammer on people and just totally obliterate people out of their minds. It's, I'm telling you, it's a good problem to have. So yeah. People always want to trade people. Don't do it. Don't do it. Keep your problems. Keep your good problems. Indeed. Indeed. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is, bro. So best starting five, I think this is where you go. Uh, will it be this week? Probably not. But it's something to keep an eye on, you know. Um, otherwise, if if they if it is just status quo and, and they keep Bianish going there at center, and they keep Connor Williams there, and uh, you know you got to turn still and Lyle Collins. I mean, it, it is really good depth to have, but it it, it could be uh, tempting. You know, somebody might say, "Hey, you know, look at this. You guys have some extra linemen here. How about we give you this guy for this and this and that?" So it'll be interesting to see once we get a little bit closer to the trade deadline if 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 there's any takers on any of these maybe connor williams becomes trade bait bro would you trade connor williams i would personally i don't know who would trade for it, it would be somebody with a bad offensive line <laughs> it might might stay uh in the conference you know and um those moves do happen you know there's always the person ah they're not gonna trade within the division well, i know there was early rumors that teams wanted mcgovern but i don't think any conversations came up for Connor Williams, unless and, and the Cowboys could be asking for. I mean, he is a former second round pick who started a lot of games since he's been in the league, and maybe the Cowboys are asking for a third, and teams probably only want to pay a fourth or a fifth. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the topic there with the offensive line. I think it's 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 something really to monitor, but we got a lot of beef there now. Legitimate depth, and we don't even have Josh Ball in the mix yet. So. You know, that, that's another player here who's – I think Josh Ball is going to be red-shirted this year. Haven't heard anything else about him. I know some people were asking about Josh Ball. Um, Haven't heard squat, bro. Haven't heard squat about anything about Josh Ball. So, have you heard anybody? Has anybody heard anything? No. Hmm. Let's see what else we got here, guys. Comments, questions in the chat box. Let me know what you got. Let's see here. Marvel Group, Connor Williams gets penalties, but haven't given up many sacks this season. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Connor Williams does definitely get that. What about the seventh round pick for who? Seventh round pick. Yeah, not sure. Let's talk about Boss Man Fat and Kelvin Joseph. Oh, he's, Mike. Talking, he's talking about uh, Forniak. No, Fournier, yeah, he's and he had a really good preseason, right? So can't forget about that guy there. Um, but in in some of these moves, could somebody get get cut? I would I would hate to to lose him because I think he he played really played really well there at center. You know, so will the trade lines be ringing in Dallas? You, you know, Jerry Jones was quoted as saying they're open for business. Is it just him being the salesman or whatever the hell? Who knows? But 
you know, for him to put it out there, maybe where there's smoke, there's fire. So they're open for business, supposing, according to Jerry. Uh, we got, you know, what another week or two to go for the trade deadline. And next week, I think it is. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with that. It, it, for me, the Cowboys, while it's very exciting to talk with, with fans about trade and this sort of thing, they haven't done a, a good one here in a long time. And the last really good one was probably Amari Cooper, right? And uh, they did use a late rounder for for Robert Quinn, you know. But I, this was uh, before the season started, so you know they to have sex, Robert Quinn. Yeah, Robert Quinn. So let, let's talk a little bit about that, Mike. If you want to make a trade for somebody, let, let's let's just take out you know player for player trades because that that's another rarity with the Cowboys as well. Now let's say the Cowboys want to trade for somebody. What is the most you would trade? Like as far as like draft equity would you trade a first round pick for somebody or are you looking more what, what is your comfort zone as far as like i would tr- i would feel comfortable with trading this round for this player i think my answer stays the same even from last week joe I don't, I don't know if i do trade for a player or trade a player away um you know the the cutting jaylen smith you know we that when the yeah, we were shocked at first, but we I mean it wasn't surprising. So I but I think if we trade a player away or if we trade for a player, I'm 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 gonna be intrigued on the position. Um because I, I like the taped up broken roots that we got back there in safety. Um, you know, I like how our D line's playing without Tank Lawrence and Dorrance Armstrong. Uh the offensive lines you have plug and play pieces that make you even better. Um we know the tight end and the wide receiver position, the running back, the quarterback. I, I just don't see where you would go mortgage draft picks. And if I was, it wouldn't be no more than a six. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of been uh, what the Cowboys do. Unless there's a really good deal where they're um, feeling maybe they're a player away, which I don't, I don't think the Cowboys are there yet. I think they're That's building – they're building towards something good, but it's not quite there yet. You know what I mean? Like this isn't like your, you know, 94 Cowboys where you go and you pick up, you know, Deion Sanders and then clinch it to get back to the Super Bowl. I don't, I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think we're building towards it. But um, I, I'm with you. I think if you trade for somebody, look for somebody that's like a the final year of their rookie contract, somebody that's kind of, you know, maybe a rotational guy, but they can give you some juice. For me, I would look at an edge player. If you can find somebody better than Basham, go for it. If you can find somebody better than uh, Dorrance Armstrong, do it. You know what I mean? So fifth round pick, if you can find somebody, I I would be down for it. But here's my thing. So the Cowboys bye week was after week seven. So we're going to be going into week nine, right? Is that correct? Right, right. We're week eight, right? Week eight was the bye week. We're going into week nine or week seven. Week seven was the bye. We're going to week eight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you trade for somebody, they got to come in here, learn the system. Week nine, week ten, they're going to be inactive on your roster. Week nine, week ten, is it is it worth it to trade somebody that's going to give you a seven game stretch plus playoffs? To me, I don't think it is. I don't think it's worth it, Joe. Yeah, it'll, it'll be something to watch to see what they do. I, I, I would I would love to see something, you know, um, I would like to be surprised, but I would just tell fans to be prepared. Like, if they did trade, it's probably going to be just somebody of a, a smaller cat. It won't, it won't be like a headliner type of guy. It won't be like a Quinn and Williams. It won't be like a Kyle Fuller. It won't be like, a, you know, stuff on Gilmore. It won't be somebody of that stature. It's going to be somebody that's, you know, somebody that they brought in here during their 30 visits, you know, in, in, in the previous draft visits, you know, maybe they're in their final year of the contract. This is, that, those are Will McClay special. So you might you might look at some somebody like that that you could get, you know, on the cheap because the Cowboys, they're cheap. <laughs> With Stephen Jones, these guys are cheap as hell. But, you know, you're seeing a little bit of the payoff this year. You're seeing the payoff with that cheapness. So, I just I don't know that they'll do that they'll break off, you know, off off the uh, freeway here as far as like what they've what they've done here under Stephen Jones. Just be, you know, uh, misers, 
you know, to be quite honest, they're they're not this team that, that goes out and and does, you know, anything crazy or nothing like that. So be interesting to see here. Comments, questions. Let's see what we got here. Marvel Group. What about adding Grady Jarrett and Joe Hayden? I think uh Grady Jarrett would be an interesting one there. What would you give for him though? Um, I think you could get um for um, you know, a day three draft pick, but they're gonna want more for that, you know what I mean? So uh I don't know that that would be pushing it. Joe Hayden, uh, he's he's uh, he's past his prime. I'm, I'm not a Joe Hayden fan myself. Mike, I, I didn't didn't say that a great green button. I saw a good one here that that, that caught my eye. Oh God, where is it? Somebody dropped a name that I liked. Let me see. Where's that guy at? Uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Culver House. What about Melvin Ingram? He would be a good fit. See, now this would be a guy that would be like a Robert Quinn type of guy, right? You could probably get Melvin Ingram for a fourth, maybe a fifth rounder. Older player, right? But uh, some of the, they, they could give you, you know, a little bit of that juice, a little bit of that pass rushing juice, you know, give you, you know, some uh, final pass rushes on, on the at the backside of his career. I, I would give like a fifth for Ingram to be real. You know that that would be my my opening opening line for him because older player, kind of bounced around here a couple times. He's with uh, who is he with right now? He's with um, I mean he played with the Seahawks. He played with the Chargers. Where is Melvin Ingram playing right now? Actually, does anybody know? I don't. Melvin Ingram, Mario, okay, here we go. Steelers, right? Okay, so Steelers, right? Steelers are not having a very good season. So they might do that. They might entertain a Melvin Ingram trade for whatever the hell they can get because that team, the Steelers, they got to rebuild. And, you know, um, it might be one of those fire sell type of deals. And that's the other thing. If you want to trade with a team, look for a team that's doing a fire sell. Houston Texans, maybe you can poke their eyes out on <laughs> some of their guys. So they're they're trading people left and right again. They just shipped off uh you know Ingram back to the Saints. But really yeah. So yeah Melvin Ingram that's that's a good name there. I, I do like that one indeed. I think that's that would be something that the Cowboys would more likely do than you know, a, a Quinn and Williams, some, you know, something like that. And don't get me wrong. I love Quinn and Williams, but they're going to want a lot. That team needs to rebuild some more. Uh, I don't know. The Jets don't know what they're doing. Maybe you can rip them off. <laughs> Who knows? You know what I mean? The Jets are a complete, utter disaster again. So maybe you can rip them off. You know what I mean? You never yeah. know. You never know. You never know. So some of these teams get real desperate. So look, look for those. Look for those desperate teams. Fire cell teams, um, those are, are usually the teams that are in business for sure. That's why, you know, <clears throat> and if you're the Cowboys, if you do trade a player, you want to, you, you would, ideally you would want to, you would want to trade with a team who has a bad record and you know, they're going to project to be a bad team. So you get a high pick, you know what I mean? So you would want to tr if you wanted to trade, you want to trade with a with a crappy team so you get a, a better pick out of it at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Buddy Johnson, good to see you in the chat box, bro. Uh do you know Kevin Joseph's 40 time is pro day is four three four? Yeah, Kevin Joseph, a very fast player indeed. You know what I mean? So speed kills and it's helped the Cowboys defense immensely. You know, we've gone from being, you know, mediocre average speeds to getting a lot of speed on the field. And it's, it's really shown up, you know, when, when you look at how dynamic Micah Parsons has been, right? And, um, you know, even Osa Digizuo has got pretty decent speed for the big guy that he is, Jabril Cox. And um, a lot of these guys, Mike, speed kills. How do you feel? Let's talk about Joseph. This is, this is a good segue. Calvin Joseph getting back into the mix, Mike. Where do you see him fitting onto this team here? I think they're going to get him a good look at special teams first, see where he acclimated to that, get his get get his muscles moving, get his legs running down up and down on the punt and kickoff, and possibly the return team. Not as a returner, but maybe not on the return team. Who knows? Maybe. But uh, I don't. Everybody's been Al Harris has been praising Anthony Brown. 
right? Yeah. Um, so I, it, it ain't going to be uh, where, you know, it's going to be as easy. All right, Kelvin Joseph, second-round pick, take Anthony Brown's six-round pick spot. It, it, it ain't going to be that way. I, I think Kelvin Joseph, when given opportunity, is going to have to make plays. I think if we're up, you know, 40 to 10, you'll see Kelvin Joseph in there. And that's when he has to um, – make big plays. If he can get a pick when it matters there to close the game out and go victory, Tom Landry ship formation, that's going to put him on the map. But right now, Anthony Brown, since he's been hurt, lapped him quite a few times already during this NFL season. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that's that's a good point there, Mike. That's a good point. It's, it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, where – I mean, he's a second-round pick, right? So – Definitely, you want to get him out there, and it's just been a very slow uh, start. You know, going even back to uh, going back to OTAs in uh, minicamp. You know what I mean? The, it was a slow start. I think that that kind of set him back a little bit. Then he got COVID, and you know, it, um, but you know, finally, you know, back to practice, and uh, like you said, get get the juices flowing. Get it going and see if you can compete out there. You know, if you can get, if you can improve over even at the nickel spot, which I think he would do well there in the nickel position as well. If you can utilize that speed and, and you know, just, you know, blanket, you know, um, a tight end or, or whatever, you know, make some plays on the ball, I think that uh, you make that move. You know, yeah. if, if he's better than, than Jordan Lewis, which I think he's going to be, and, and not to mention Maurice Kennedy, I think he, I think they sent him to IR like short term or so. I think he's banged up or something like that. So I think that opened the door there for Boss Man Fat to get out there and show what he can do. You know what I mean? So let's get that going. I like this comment here, Mike. We need a D tackle all day. So you know the the delayed return of uh, Gallimore, and you hit it on the head. Uh, you know last time, Mike, that there's probably more than just a dislocated elbow, right? Like, probably something got torn or something crazy happened there. They're done. They're they're not revealing the whole story there because he a dislocated elbow to be gone this long. It's it's. Uh, I don't know if that matches the timeline. To be quite honest, Mike, he might have broke a bone somewhere around his elbow because. Bones usually take this long to heal. Right. Um, and so I, I think, yeah, he probably dislocated his elbow, but I think he broke something too. Yeah, it's definitely more more than what they're telling us. But, yeah, I agree. John Stanley, uh, defensive tackle would be another area that if you want to, you know, make a move or, or do something there, that, that makes a lot of sense because right now it's just Osa, really. Bohanna, he's had his moments, but uh, – Definitely, he's, he's he's getting good work in there for Bohanna. I think the work that Bohanna's getting right now are are dirty stoppages, the run game. He's going to benefit a lot from this season and next year. I think Bohanna makes a, a a big jump, but right now he's you know he's okay. But uh, I think Osa, you know, you you got to get another person in the mix. Uh, Urban is another guy that that uh, got banged up. He's on. They sent him to IR as well. So you know that that might open the door there for for Tristan. But yeah, that that mix there is not very impressive to me. Calvin um, Watkins, right? Yeah, Carlos. Carlos Watkins, excuse me. I'm thinking the writer. Yeah, Carlos Watkins. I think he's been a pleasant surprise, but you know, sometimes he kind of runs hot and cold for me. You know, he's not the most consistent, and that's kind of what you get from a rotational guy. You know what I mean? So. I think we have a little bit too many more rotational guys at the defensive tackle than we do somebody that's really an impact player. I think you just have the one right now with Osa, Mike. With Bosa. Osa Odigi Zua. Osa Odigi Zua. No, I, you're, you hit the head on about Carlos Watkins. I, I'm still going to be honest with you, though. I I don't know if I'd even trade for a defense attack. I'm, and, you know, I'm serious there. Um, you know, we're, we're back to that gap assignment scheme with Dan Quinn that we've seen under Chris Richard and Rod, Mar Rod Marinelli's defense, you know, go get the quarterback mentality. Um, and I think some of the gaps where he's playing, uh, Carlos Walken, I think it's he's not used to that. I think he's more used to um, X, Y, Z uh, from the defense that he was playing in Houston. Um, so I, 
you know, I think he's adapting well. I think he's, you know, he's a steal from what we've been playing. Um, but I don't know. I still wouldn't trade for a deep tackle. Will Tristan Hill get on the field already? I, I don't think that – I honestly feel that they're – I think they're still working him in. I don't know if he'll be active for this game. That's why I'm thinking if he's a healthy scratch because that's what happened, you know, what was it? His rookie year, he kept being a healthy scratch. And you're like, what the hell's going on with this second round pick? Did we did we what did we blow the pick there? It's not looking too good right now. But you know, I think the goal for sure is to get him in the mix, get him in the because you you you're getting kind of you're getting beat up there. Urban's out, Gallimore, who knows when the hell he's gonna come back, to be honest. And um, you know, so now you're kind of throwing some bodies there, you know. Um, so this comment here, uh, Truth Project, <laughs> guys, be cracking up, man. I got to post this one here. Truth Project, Tristan Hill's a bum. Yeah, and then that's that's the uh, that's what he needs to shake, man. He's got to shake that that uh, that stigma that he's you know not a good player, a bust, right? And I don't know, man. It just feels like if it if it doesn't happen this year, it it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. So. Mike, is Tristan Hill, is this do or die for him? I think it is. But what's your take on this? Because he's been hurt and they pretty much redshirted him his rookie year, because of the rap he has at Florida State of not being able to um, listen to coaches and getting benched after one good a year. Um, it could, I, don't, I don't know if an NFL team touches him. So I think he has to uh, hit this ground running if he wants to – be alive in the NFL because I don't think a team's going to touch him. Yeah, no, I agree, man. And especially here with with, with Dan Quinn and uh, Mike McCarthy, these guys have shown that it's uh, you got to earn your keep, man. And if you lose time, you you're going to have to earn your way back in there. They're not giving anything back to people, which I love. I really, really love that. And you want that. You want the competition. You know, unless you're a Troy Aikman or an Emmett or or a Dak or Zeke or Elliott or somebody of that stature, but you know, a lot of the rest of the roster, you know, um, where where you need a lot of competition, I, I think it's a good problem to have. Soup trap in the house. Hey, soup, what's up, buddy? Good to see you in the chat box. Appreciate you, guy. What's up, soup? Danny Savage, but if Dak gets hurt over a steel block, McCarthy should be fired. I, I I wouldn't worry about it, bro. I, I think we're good. I mean, he's he's uh he's done pretty well this year, to be honest. You know what I mean? I, some people still, for whatever reason, just absolutely hate the guy. So I don't know what else it's gonna take. But I mean, he won me over when when he did his thing with, with Joey Bosa, and then just continued to to put in a good work there. You know what I mean? This is not the rookie year, Terrence Steele, by any means. So, and a credit to to Coach Philbin. You know, credit to him. And uh, McCarthy mentioned that in the press conference. So Philbin, a uh, really, a really big influence on uh, reshaping this offensive lineup, not, not just Terrence Steele, but, you know, you're seeing some really good play out of uh, the GOAT, Zach Martin. Connor Williams, I think he's played okay, but the penalties, they're killing us. The penalties is really is what killing uh Killing us with Connor Williams, man. And like you said, Mike, McCarthy hates penalties. In that last game, we got killed, bro. We got killed. Oh, no, Soup Chef. Sorry to hear about your wife's ankle. That stinks. Broke her foot. Oh, man. Jeez, bro. Well, really, shout out to you for ma even making it, bro. So <laughs> shout out to you to being here. Oh, uh, salute that to you, bro. Stuck. Yeah, that, hey, that, that's. I, I have a fear of falling and like scraping myself up, and I have a fear of breaking bones. Like when you see me walk, like I look like a weirdo when I walk because I'm like, I don't want to trip, I don't want to fall. I hate falling. Mm. You know who else would hate falling? Our quarterbacks who would face the attack of this player here, Jordan Davis, the, the defense tackle out of Georgia. I love him, bro. Like. And he might be one of those defensive tackles. He, it, it, him in the draft is going to be interesting to watch uh, where he goes. You know, he could either really rise or, or you know, he could be there, you know, um, at the end of the first round. Defensive tackles, you know, 
they're hit and miss in the league knows that. So unless you're a, you know, a can't miss prospect like an Aaron Donald, those guys usually, you know, kind of fall down a little bit in the draft, you know, but man, he, he's, he's played really well there. Georgia, uh, Stephen Jones has mentioned the Georgia defensive program a few times in interviews, you know, to <laughs> talking about Will McClay scouting these guys. And, you know, we, we covered them last year, Mike. We, we, we talked about McClay and um, the staff out there looking at the Georgia prospects, Eric Stokes, he's doing a good job there for the Packers, you know, um, Ojalari, you know, playing for the enemy, but he, he's a, he's a good prospect. So Georgia, there's something good in the water down there. So that's a good prospect there. Danny Savage. Appreciate that there for all the draft Knicks out there. Keep an eye on him. Yeah, Santi. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> you know, hopefully we get to 32, and, and I'm with you. It, it would take some, something crazy for him to, to drop that far. Um, but yeah, like you said, you know, um, I don't expect them to be there either. But if the Cowboys are there, and they want to be aggressive. This might be the year where maybe you can package a pick and move up a little bit. So we'll see if the Cowboys change their way or if they just stay pat like they have done the last couple of seasons. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. John Stanley, hey, boys, running a good channel. Appreciate you, John. Appreciate you, man. Good to see you in the chat box. Super it's not trap. my channel. It's his. He does. He runs a fantastic channel. Big fan. Soup Trap. Appreciate you, bro, for, for coming through, man. Sorry to hear all that going on there. Still cannot block a car still in prison, and now he's shutting down Bosa. Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> it really is, right? So he, I think he's more of a, you know, they talk about a gamer. He seems like more of a gamer. You know, they, they've said that about Dak Prescott, too, that he's a gamer, not so much as sharp in practice as he is in game. So there's players like that in the league, and I'll take it, man. I'll, I'll take uh, him shutting down some of the best. So go with it, bro. But – uh you know, I think that's that's it for to tonight's show. We we covered a lot here. You know, uh, Urban he's out with a tricep injury. Kennedy IR as well with a concussion. So those guys, you know, um, they're out. But Kelvin Joseph he's he's getting close, bro. He's getting close to to getting back out there. You know, they're working him in. I, I don't think I don't expect him to play in this game or or to be activated or anything like that. But you you do like to hear that he's getting the practice now. And getting in the mix, so um, you know that they, they have a padded practice coming up here. I think tomorrow, so I think we'll get more confirmation as far as where Dak Prescott is in his recovery. You know, I think that's that's the big thing here for this game here with with uh, Minnesota. You know, it's as far as like how can how can he manage the pain? It's going to be about pain management, right? Can he push off that? Is he going to be less mobile? Is he going to be able to roll out? You know, uh, can he finish the game? You know what I mean? Minnesota is going to come with it. You know, they always play as tough every single year, no matter who the coach is or what the record is. There's there's just something about the Cowboys-Vikings rivalry. It's kind of like Cowboys 49ers, Cowboys Cardinals. Those three teams, to me, always play us very, very tough. And I expect this one to be another physical game. So they, you know, we have to set the tone. All right, we got to set that physical tone here. 100%, Joe. I think uh, they got 21 sacks, you know, in seven games. That's three sacks a game they're averaging. So we need all the best five guys that we've talked about during this show protecting Dak. You know, Zeke is going to have to, uh, you know, really, really lay the hammer and start chipping the, at these guys on defense because they're going to come after that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm super shocked that. Um, their their running back only has 366 yards. Uh, ne never seen that coming uh, out of seven games. Dalvin Cook only with 366 yards, so he's kind of having a slow start there. Um, Kirk Cousins, you know, he, he's having a good year, a good start with 13 touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, so, I mean, we got to get in his face. We got to make him uncomfortable. Um, I do not want this guy in pass coverage. I want this guy to make it uncomfortable for uh, Kirk Cousins because if Kirk Cousins gets on a roll, he he's on, he's on a roll. When he gets hot, he gets hot. They got deadly wide receivers over there. 
You're talking about Justin Jefferson. Um, what other receivers they got, Joe, over there? Yeah, they got Thielen. Al Thielen. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they our corners, our defense is going to have to be on par. Uh, they got Rashad Freeland over there. I mean, Dak's going to, you know, lay some wood on him too. So, um, want to get that ball out of, you know, get – get that ball back to Kirk Cousins. So it's going to be one hell of a game. It's not going to go in there and be a walk in the park. Um, it's going to be a real close game. Can the Cowboys – Cowboys had a lot less and beat them uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, Cowboys should go in there and make a statement win. And yeah. uh, and it should be, you know, a really good staple win for the Cowboys if they can close this game out and be on top of their A game because I don't want to see this slow, crappy start that the offense has been doing the last couple of weeks. Yeah, that, that's one area that they, they got to fix in the red zone, convert some more of those. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good game to watch for sure, guys. But uh, that's going to be it for tonight's show. Mike, let everybody know where they can find you if they haven't already. Yep, Joe has it right there. I think it's right there. Cowboys Corner right here on YouTube, underscore Cowboys Corner on Twitter. Guys, I am so sorry if you follow me on Twitter. I've been a crypto fiend. I've been I've, I've been in it for about a handful of months, and uh, it's been a good investment so far. So I like to share a lot of things, not financial advice. Um, do your own research. But, yeah, let's go Cowboys. Let's go Cowboys indeed. Shout out to everybody in the chat box and everybody that stuck around and with your boys here. Make sure you guys hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for all the notifications when I go live. And for the next Frisco Report, which we usually air on Tuesday, I got a little tied up yesterday with work, so we had to push it back a day. So we usually air on Tuesdays at the same time. So, guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out, everybody. Oh, yeah, man. I love Stephen Jones. Fuck! <laughs>